Hello everyone, I am Baba Baroda and I am with Bhuvana Subramanya Ma'am. Ma'am is the Chief Marketing Officer at Ramstein India. She also has a 9 months working experience in IBM India Private Limited. She has held multiple roles there. She has been the Digital Marketing and Performance Lead, Portfolio Manager, Developer Marketing Lead. It's so many positions that she has held, I have to make a note of it. She has also done her executive ex executive MBA from Exilarai Jamshedpur. Ma'am, if you can just tell us about yourself, about your company, and what you do, and what is your day-to-day -day activities in your company. Sure, thank you, Vaibhav. Thank you for that introduction. I was in IBM for nine years, in fact. Um, okay, about me, I am Bhubna Subramanian, and I am the Chief Marketing Officer at Transtech India, and I'm responsible for planning, developing, implementing, and monitoring the overall business marketing strategy. Um, that's across public relations, internal communications, research, digital, social, uh, driving customer experience, and performance marketing as well. And uh, just to give you an idea, if it's, a, it's the CMO's job to drive transformation, acceleration, and build capability for the organization as well. Uh, especially in the last two years with digitization becoming so prevalent and prominent and necessary for organizations, it's become the marketer's job to kind of take that charge. Uh, marketing has to be, and you know, for me, one uh, chief goal that will never change is uh, CMO is growing the business. So marketing has to be that partner to the business and help grow it as well. So that's what my day to day is. Of course, uh, also the important part of any leader for that matter, whether you're in marketing or IT or uh, HR, or it doesn't matter, is to take care of your, is to take care of your people, to build a team, to enable the team. That's a very, very important part. And ma'am, what exactly is that your company does means, uh, I was going through the company and how it does. Maybe you can just tell us about what your company is into and what it does. Yeah, Transted is one of the leading uh, HR services companies in the world, and we are uh, present across thirty-eight plus, uh, you know, countries in the in the world. And it's also known; it, it's based a Dutch-based multinational human resources consulting firm, and uh, it's it's a sixty-plus years old company. And we take care of all kinds of staffing, HR services. Uh, anything that is related to people and uh, you know that is human forward for us uh, we we actually serve as a trusted human partner in today's technology driven world so that's why we call it the human forward movement and we help if you have to put it very simply we help people secure uh, jobs and stay relevant in the ever changing world of work we bring the opportunities and the people together and create a match. That's our main role. Um, actually, I have a lot of personal interest in this podcast as well because I am someone who wants to take up marketing in future and your career graph and the level of position that you have taken in your career, it is something that even I would want to replicate. I would want to have a career like you. So ma'am, how did you choose marketing? Because for me, choosing marketing was like a process of elimination. I did this life project. I did not like it in finance. I chose this life project. Okay, I like it here. So this is what happened for me. But what is your process of choosing marketing at a career that you want to grow in? Interesting, uh, Vibha, you say that it's a elimination thing. Uh, for me, it was an el uh, you know a thing of elimination in my 11th grade. Okay, I was very clear as to what I don't want to do. I didn't want to do any professional courses. I didn't want to be a doctor. I didn't want to be an engineer. So I was very clear with that. So that was eliminated, right? But I was very also very clear that in my 11th grade that I want to get into sales and marketing because uh, only because of the way I would speak or, you know, participate in projects and, you know, things, uh, participate in debates. And uh, my teachers were very encouraging as well towards that. Uh, but however, you know, in those days, we didn't have many options. And if you didn't do science, uh, you were not considered smart, okay? We didn't have this many options in those days. So I did my botany in college and then I pursued my marketing and MBA. Um, everything I learned in the earlier part of my career was on the job, right? There was no formal education that had many streams of marketing 
uh, included in the curriculum at all like you guys have so many options you have social you have digital you have product marketing you have performance you have everything that you can study in a book we didn't have that um i just used kotler which was the all encompassing guide and my experience at work i started work immediately after college and uh, that experience at work was the source of all my case studies in the exams i would never go and present a case study that was in the book sorry you know i would write from my experience so that gave me an edge um uh, but for those who like you who are looking to get a, get into marketing as a career you have many options of taking it up right from your college days uh, so you can be uh, choose to be a specialist uh, like how you were talking about being a social media marketer or you can be an seo specialist a marketing analyst a uh, digital marketer which is a broader area uh, content marketing marketing operations product marketing or be a generalist also right that can happen over a period of time you can't achieve everything in the first 5 years of your career and you can be a generalist dabble in all of the above over a period of time and then choose whether you want to be a specialist or you want to be a generalist uh, so marketing internships like the ones that you guys are doing will also ex- help experience different marketing roles uh, first hand at an organization or an agency level there's clearly a very big difference between what happens in the books versus what happens at work so uh, this uh, internship experience or you can also shadow senior marketing leaders to understand the bigger picture and the role of marketing in an organization demystic get that demystified in your head because marketing is not just one aspect it's got so many pillars to it right and uh, to me the advantage of marketing or being in any function for that matter is it's industry agnostic so it's not difficult to apply your experience from one industry to the other uh, but i would recommend uh, you know skilling yourself in some basics like writing and communication skills being organized uh, build your creative approach and with so much martech that is being used by marketers today equip yourself with some tech knowledge and around content management systems or automation software data analytics tool seo tools and if you're interested in the creative side then the design tools and uh, you know it's also very very important as a marketer to understand uh the audience from day one right you need to know that as a marketer your audience is the main thing that you need to get to so spend time understanding who you work is targeted at and uh, this is something i tell in every lecture i uh, give or speak to students is befriend numbers numbers and math are very different typically marketers think math is very difficult so don't go that path uh, marketer cannot be a you know without doing without numbers right so it, you can't be a complete marketer without understanding numbers and data you don't have to be proficient in it but develop basic skills in it right knowing all of this is not not necessarily being an expert being deep diving into it it's about knowing all of it and then choosing where you are good at uh, that's that's that would be my advice to you ma'am it's in in marketing you what you mean to say is first explore what are the fields that you like and then if you want to go into specialization then you need to go that so it's better to explore understand what you like and then go into for specialization and while answering this question you are yes ma'am while answering this question you answered my second question as well that what are the essential requirements that you feel are for a student to choose marketing so kind of answer that question that you have to be tech and even by i am choosing marketing i am also not very friendly with math now even i have to be a little bit interactive with numbers and develop a relationship with them uh ma'am talking about uh, yes ma'am no no go ahead i think there's a lag oh ma'am talking about the skills ma'am uh, what do you think are uh, suppose i want to build a cv uh, for my placements for a job in marketing so what do you think as a recruiter or as someone who hires for a marketing position would be nice courses certification that would reflect positively on my cv and that would give me a benefit over others 
Yeah, so this, so I mean, I'm coming from a HR services company, uh, right, by Bhav. So it, this doesn't necessarily apply to just marketing CV. So there's nothing like that, right? So overall, I'm saying keep it simple. That's your best friend when it comes to building your CV. Don't try to put everything you've done into the CV. Like keep it to a page or two and not more. How much ever your experiences? We say this to even experienced people, right? And being in marketing, it's really important to use the right keywords. You should know that your CV should be SEO ready, especially with today's world, it's digital. Uh, recruiters are looking at, you know, uh, automating their recruitment processes, which means they're keying in words, relevant words like digital marketer or, you know, experienced digital marketer or uh, SEO specialist. You know, that's how they search. So keep your CV SEO ready, keep the digital version very clean, uh, very traceable, right? Customize the CV if required, if you're sending it to somebody, right? If somebody is asking you to send the CV and if you have a relevant experience in that particular industry, or if you have done a project in that industry, then, you know, customize it saying, I highlight that part. Uh, you should also highlight the relevant ones uh, if, uh, you know, use relevant links if you have done work, if you've created a page or if you've done some work, then just put those links like in a neat box on the side. Um, uh, keep your social media platform clean, especially LinkedIn, right? And update it, um, you know, add a splash of creativity, uh, but creativity without the right con content also fa falls flat because I've seen very creative um, CVs, but it doesn't really speak to me because it's only focusing on the creative aspect of the CV. Uh, as you rightly asked, if you've taken on any internship, certification or projects, include them and talk about what you've learned uh, and contributed to the project. It's not about putting like, huh, I have done five CVs. Uh, I've done, sorry, I've done five internships. I've done 10 projects. It's not about the count. It's about, I've done this project with this organization and my learning is this. My contribution is this. You don't have to write the entire story in the CV. Understand that CV is a foot in the door, right? For a foot in the door, what do you need? You just need the key. You need to turn the knob. That's all. You, you can't tell the entire story outside the door, right? So keep some mystery for the interviewer to reach you and then talk about it. So keep it simple and keep it clean. Keep it relevant. That's, that's really important. And ma'am, how important it is that it, it is a very personal question as well. How important it is to quantify whatever whatever you have done means quantify in the sense of numbers in the CV. Uh, if you have let's say created uh, you know driven two hundred leads for example, it depends on what you're talking about. Then it is relevant. Uh, if you have generated uh, fifty clips, if you're in PR, right, for a specific. Uh, press release or whatever it is, then it is relevant. Um, it is So as I said, you have to match it to what is relevant for that particular post that you're applying to also. It's not just, as I said, it's not a list. It's not a you know checklist that you're giving them, ki, huh, I've done this, done this, done this, done this. So therefore consider me. It has to, you know, make a mark when somebody's reading it. Ima even think about it, Viber, people don't have so much time in today's world to go through so many CVs also. In fact, at any given point in time from a campus, we're getting hundreds of students. So the recruiter who's going through it will be able to kind of, you know, look through CVs that make a mark and or, or calling out uh, certain things which is relevant to that organization as well. So keep that, keep that part in mind. So customize your CV a little bit according to where you are saying it. Highlight the important words so that it reflects to the organization. And if there is an SEO check on your CV, it passes through that SEO check. Uh, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And many times you will see that the job description itself helps you a lot. So you know, you if you have those words in your CV, right? I mean, not not to fake it, but I'm saying if it. If it's relevant to your profile, then you should have those words, right? That's what they're looking for. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, we are also told something like the six seconds rule because a recruiter has only six seconds to see your CV. So Absolutely. I like the important points and keep it as bold as it can. Uh, so that it reflects to the recruiter.
Uh, Ma'am, my next question is about once that CV gets shortlisted, you have designed your CV according to the JD, you have highlighted the important points, you have done the skill. So there are a number of cases where people are not able to qualify through that interviews. There are a number of situations where they put you in certain situations, where stress situations they put you in. So what is the recruiter looking for when he asks such questions? What is his perspective and how is he judging you? So I wanted to ask, analyze it from a recruiter's point of view. You will be the best person to say that because you are from an HR firm also. So what is the recruiter approach and what is the recruiter looking for when he asks you a question or puts you in a stress situation? For any job at any level uh, vibe, I'll start with saying that we're looking for the right attitude first of all. Right? Are you listening? Are you, you know, able to respond uh, within that particular time? Are you? It's not about being intelligent. It's not about giving jargons. It's not about throwing all the knowledge that you have acquired. It's about applying that knowledge and being able to provide your point of view, your solution to it. It doesn't have to be something that is uh, being done already or it can be your own solution. It can be a very innovative solution. It can be a very hutke solution for all you care, right? So that is what they're looking for when they're putting a question on your situation or something like that. But the other side of uh, something that I've observed, right? When I meet candidates uh, is that they don't inter- they don't research the company. They don't research the role or the interviewer themselves. They just come, they, they you know, this, uh, the word overconfidence has lived forever, right? So that is a deal breaker, right? If you're being very overconfident, you're not coming prepared for the interview. That shows like three questions down the line, it will show at some point in time, right? So you'll have to be very confident about the company that you're interviewing for. And also see, I mean, today's LinkedIn has made it made your life so much easier. So you have the option of seeing who your mutual connection is, or if you have mutual interests, right? You could start with those icebreakers. Uh, but I, the other side of it sounds very basic, but I'm telling you, please dress well, check your posture, um, eat and rest well before the interview again because the energy you display is important. If you don't look enthusiastic about the job, they're not going to give you that job. You have to, you know, sound it. It's not about being loud or, you know, being very boorish. It's about being, you know, very energetic, being enthusiastic about the role that you're interviewing for. And especially in marketing, uh, you know, you should know basic stuff, right? When you're answering questions about marketing, Uh, It could be as simple as knowing difference between B2B and B2C marketing, about SEO and SEA, about, you know, design and, uh, you know, content marketing. Those basics are really a must. Uh, If you're a fresher, then you need to speak about what you learned in a project or an internship. If you're experienced, then talk about your successes and failures as well. Uh, What would you do better? And why are you relevant to that organization? At the end of the day, you're answering the question, whoever the interviewer may be, that why you? That's the basic question, right? So if you're able to answer that question, just keep an elevator pitch in your mind that's interesting to the listener, like eliminate jargon, um, you know, keep the conversation going. Be prepared with some questions. Many times when I ask the candidate, do you have any questions for me? There's a drag, they say, no, ma'am. I mean... (laughs) You, you're not in, it shows me that you're not interested, right? I'm saying it could be about the organization's purpose. It could be about the industry or it could be about your own career growth. It doesn't matter what it is about, but have some questions so that the conversation is both ways. It's not just one way interviewer asking questions and then you're just answering very officiously, right? That's not how it works. Uh, read the body language of the uh, recruiter or the interviewer and steer, steer the conversation in a direction that interests them as well, right? And always end the interview on a high note. Like, thank you, have a good day, have a good weekend. Even small gestures like that make a big difference. uh, I will certainly use many of these tips in my SIP as well as in my final placement. But you were also talking about LinkedIn as a source. Ma'am, how can students use LinkedIn? Means a lot of companies may not come to their campus. There'll be a lot of companies that they want to go in, but they don't get a chance to go in. But LinkedIn as a platform can provide you with this opportunity. So how can students use LinkedIn more effectively in order to reach out to these companies, maybe companies like yours if they want to get into, 
and how can they enhance the performance using LinkedIn and get to the dream company. First, as I said, simple steps by the one is keep your profile updated. Uh, you know, uh, follow leaders of those companies whom, whom you'd like to apply to, uh, right? And uh, uh, also be part of certain, LinkedIn also has groups, right? Like marketing groups, CMO groups, uh, digital marketer groups, join them because you also will get a lot of knowledge and practical knowledge that, and discussions that are happening. Participate in those discussions. Ask questions. There are many, many leaders who are willing to answer, help, direct guide all of that happens on linkedin as well it's a great you know it's a lovely platform to be on uh, but uh, but the most important thing is uh, what people don't like also is something that you need to understand one is you can send a mail in mail or you can reach out to them on message that is fine but i get messages like hey uh, very unofficial very casual right hey uh, here is my CV. There is no introduction. There is no context. Um, I, I might still, because it's a job and my primary thing is to get somebody a job, I would still give it to a recruiter to see if it's relevant. And I will put it in the, you know, uh, in the pipe. But it doesn't leave a good impression, right? When you just say something, hey, and all of that, that kind of a language doesn't help. And don't keep pestering somebody on the right that is also not a no no for sure sometimes i get messages very late in the night on linkedin uh, consider my profile i mean there is a timing for everything there is a way to do it a professional keep it professional uh, i've gone through your profile it's interesting i'd like i like your company i'd like to apply for a role if you have any you know you'll have to keep it open ended also right and and as I said earlier, do some research about the person you're reaching out to also. Uh, there are people who just apply for jobs which are not in, not, I'm not saying now. Now it's still relevant because I can still give it to a recruiter across profiles, right? So I'm saying even earlier, it would just not be in the domain that I am in. And they would not have even researched that I've left IBM and I've joined another company. They would say, can you get me a job in IBM? So I'm just saying, if you don't do that kind of research, then your the response would be very negative, I would say. But if you're doing it well, if you're part of those groups, if you are following the right people at any given point in time, then I think it's a it's a good way to keep LinkedIn updated. So the basic crux would be keep uh, keep the relevant information there. Uh, if you talk to people, people will respond. If you talk it properly, keep it formal, keep it a bit open-ended. Try to understand the person you are trying to approach, uh, what uh, and the interest and what are the what is going on in the marketing community if you're going to approach that person. Uh, yeah. Now, once you have chosen marketing, your CV has been shortlisted, you have done the interview, next step is actual job. So when you get into a marketing role, maybe be it any role, be it an SEO marketer, be a social media marketer, or a marketing strategy person, what is a career in marketing look like? Means you have held multiple roles. So what will a career, suppose I want to go into marketing, but I don't know what a career in marketing will look like for me. I have that interest because I don't have any corporate experience up till now, apart from my life projects. So if you can share like what will be the career in marketing? Yeah, for me, uh, it has been learning, uh, always learning, you know, uh, always on learning mode. That's something I tell my, not just students, by but I tell my team as well. And I learn every day, right? Like, for example, this whole metaverse thing is so new. How can marketing use metaverse? How can ma marketing use NFTs? We're still learning. Nobody knows the full use of metaverse until you go and experience it, right? So... Uh, and this uh, learning is available at the tip of your finger today, right? It is available on mobile. It's available on so many apps. And so that is one way of keeping yourself relevant at any given time. And so that you also know it's not just you can't always have that experience or the opportunity to do that role. Uh, so I, what I also have done in the past is like attend other events. It could be, you know, uh, events of other industries, events of competition, events of other, uh, uh, you know, forums as well. 
that's something and that's another area where you can learn from right um it could be and what i've always done is been part of business meetings also as i said in the beginning weber it is marketing's job to be a great partner to business that's the most important thing so that is really one thing that i've learned because unless you know what the business wants you can't do good marketing it's not just about web pages and product or whatever it is right you need to know what the business is business keeps changing every day so marketing has to become very relevant so that's another way of uh, looking at your career in marketing and saying um, teaching others once you've reached a level teaching others shadowing stretch assignments in relevant areas also will define your career like what do you really like do you like what they are doing do you like what uh, field that they have taken in within marketing itself uh that's another way of you know gauging whether with what your career should be and uh, of course meet all our people have conversations listen to them you know develop different perspectives uh but again i mean my advice is uh i again say this to a lot of students is don't uh start developing your career in your mind right from now for the next 20 years don't do that be agile be adaptable you know take it as it comes you guys have have lot of opportunities you have opportunities to keep shifting as well so that can happen over a period of time first 5 years invest in learning first 5 years invest in uh, you know stretching yourself going beyond what you've been given uh, you know and uh, learn more and more in the first 5 years so that's when you'll have a very rich uh, career in marketing and uh, uh dev don't stick to only marketing right also learn sales uh, understand finance as you know understand what hr does in terms of people it, it could be anything that is uh, a part of uh, the organization so learn everything so that you're able to get this full you know a very rounded uh, view of what you want to do in life so marketing as a career is like a process of learning every day because the field of marketing changes more dramatically than any other field i would like to say need operations every, finance every single day viber every single vibe i with you know google announces a cookie less marketing one day and then they come with a solution so you have to be updated seos i mean and budgets are shrinking every year so you need to know how to manage within that budget and how do you still make it relevant uh for marketing how do you do customization how do you you know kind of do targeting you know there's so much to learn there's so much continuous learning that happens in marketing and ma'am with uh, the global pandemic coming in the marketing scenario must have changed completely in the last 2 years and digital may be a new career that lot of people would be taking up digital marketing in the last 2 3 years because of the global pandemic so can you tell us that what are the new careers because of the pandemic and also with all the ever changing marketing scenario what are the new careers that are coming up in the field of marketing that people can go into like seo sm uh, social media marketing these are the new careers that we have explored maybe Three years, four, four years down the line, they were not such relevant careers. But now, with so much internet, Facebook, Instagram, these have become relevant careers. So, what are the relevant careers in marketing that are coming up uh, that people can explore? Yeah, I think uh, in the area, the the way I see it is in the area of AR, VR, uh, use of AI, you know, data analytics, led marketing. uh using nfts using cryptos using uh, you know this metaverse kind of universes uh to dri- drive your brand by i mean buying real estate in metaverse you would never have thought something like this would happen even last year leave alone you know many years ago so i think it's evolving it's continuously evolving so keep yourself keep your learning on as i said and uh, digital is definitely here to stay uh, viber so that is something that you should be thorough with it's become a must today it's not a it's not just an option anymore so every marketer has to know digital right there is uh, it's not just one person taking care of uh, uh, digital or it's not just you know a digital team alone taking everybody has to understand digital everybody has to understand how it works 
our events happen on digital our lead generation happens on digital pr happens on digital pr is which was completely print is moved to digital uh, right i'm just saying like so that is here to stay social media is here to stay it's just that you need to be updated on the uh, newer platforms that is more relevant to your organization or your brand uh, right podcasts i mean three, three years ago it was just possibly only spotify or apple that had uh podcast like now you know everybody can start a podcast it's so easy to uh, start one um and all these big players like facebook and you know of course instagram is part of them are also coming up with google is investing in so many things and i think mobile is going to play a huge role mobile marketing is going to play a huge role i see that coming up uh, because it's not fully explored in in, in uh, the world i would say uh, so those are your areas to look out for for sure Ma'am, after a few years, a uh, lot of people reach a stage of stagnation in their career where they are stuck to a particular role and they are not able to move out of it, go to the next level. So, any suggestion if someone is stuck in a particular role in marketing, say, or any role in their career or in a particular company, when is the right time to switch? And what is what does he need to do in order to go out of the stagnation? What are the skills that he need to develop? Anything? Any advice on that, ma'am? Healing is always on. I think I can't insist on it enough. Uh, but my formula for switching is always, you know, two prong. One is if the organization stops being relevant to me, right? Then I think of switching. And if I am, I stop being relevant to the organization. If I am not able to contribute or learn something, then that's when I apply, saying, okay, now it's the time to switch. Uh, right or obviously if there is no growth or if there is no personal growth or uh, you know that's that's when you should look at switching but otherwise always look at how can you continuously contribute to the organization and if you are you feel stagnated in a particular role um, I, i think i mentioned this before do you know stretch assignments in outside of marketing learn more because that's when you know whether marketing is you know the role in marketing is stagnating or you're stagnated or you know your interests have started being in some other areas like i know of people who have moved from marketing to hr because that interested them and that's something that they may have they never explored before in their life i am talking about people with 25 plus years of experience who switched careers uh, i know people who moved careers from uh, marketing to legal right and the other way around this well people have done legal law and then moved to marketing people have done computer science and moved to marketing or done computer science and moved to finance so it's not like you have to force yourself to be stagnated you can the world is your <laughs> place you go ahead and explore nothing wrong can happen with exploring so there is uh, no end to exploration because we feel that now is the time that we should decide that what career that we want to take in but talking to you i know that there is no time to explore even at the age of 40 you may be switching your career and going into some other field uh ma'am any experience in your corporate life or in your career that you feel has changed you or has been very relevant that you would want to share with our students or any piece of advice that you got when you were young that you want to share with us Uh, absolutely i mean for me as i said marketing has been a uh, one goal right i had I, i had decided but uh, it took me some time to understand that brand uh, marketing is not just branding or awareness it's about making money for the company so i had to switch my mindset uh, about it and uh, it has become a mix of art science numbers tech and adaptability as well so you need to have that also and of course uh you know i had to unlearn every time i switched uh my career my organizations right i had to unlearn recalibrate and rescope at all times so today if you see in today's world with the pandemic you're always doing this as a cmo i have to continuously recalibrate and rescope my plans my uh, strategy my tactics what have you so that is something that Uh, you need to be ready to do and it doesn't matter what level you are right? these are things these are principles that apply uh, to you a, a lot uh, at any stage of your career 
uh, one thing I definitely learned to uh, Viberg is network as much as you can. Uh, you never know who your next colleague is, who your friend is, or your, who your boss is. So network, network, network. That's definitely a big asset for anybody. It doesn't matter whether you're in marketing or any other, uh, you know, a role that you're playing. Uh, follow marketing and other leaders on social media. Keep engaging. And uh, last but not the least, keep yourself relevant. I think these are my learnings and definitely I know that this will help people as well. And ma'am, I don't know, in my colleges and some B schools, this is a perception that you need to be very good with talking, you need to be an extrovert in order to be in the field of marketing. Means how important, how do you mean rate this kind of belief and how do you think how much relevant this statement is that you need to be an extrovert, you need to be talkative, you need to be interactive to be in the field of marketing. I am a living example of a person who is not talkative, right? I my I keep telling my husband is extremely extrovert. Uh, he can talk about anything to anybody, you know, uh, and for hours. Um, I mean, if, but relatively I'm less talkative and I choose my circle, I choose my, you know, people who I can talk to and I'm, I'm very limited in that sense. But that doesn't stop you from being a very good marketer, right? It's not just about, as I said, you need good communication skills. And communication is not just about talking. It's not just about your language. And yeah, it's an advantage if you have good language, if you have, you're able to speak, uh, you're able to articulate what you really want and stuff like that. That's really an advantage. And that's something that you can skill yourself in, right? It's not necessarily that you have to study to do all this. Uh, that's there. But, uh, you know, I will not, uh, you know, restrict or uh, continue to get people to tell or tell people to continue to believe that only an extrovert can be a marketer or, um, you know, or only an, you know, an, or an introvert. There's no formula to that. It's just that, uh, and reading definitely helps Viber, reading a lot of books, uh, because that is one place where you can increase your or improve your vocabulary. Uh, you can get different perspectives. So that also gives you the ammunition to be able to hold conversations. So that that's one thing that I definitely want to tell the students. Ma'am, you raised a very important point. Means for me also, it's something that I learned from you that marketing is not just about that awareness that we see that you have to just create brand awareness. You have to make advertisement. It's also about ultimately about the conversion that you bring for the company. Yes. So, ma'am, if you'd like to just share a bit of final light on that, because that is a point that I really enjoyed. Because what we learn is marketing is about. You have to make an advertisement, you have to create awareness, this and that. But the ultimate thing for the company is you bring in revenue for the company through your marketing. So if you can share some light on that. Absolutely. So let's say you go and do a social post, uh, right? Uh, that has to have such relevant content. It has to have, uh, again, keywords that attracts. What are you putting that content for? It is one is to put the brand out there. You're putting your thought leadership out there. Uh, you're, you know, also telling people about your services. So which can turn into a query for the company, right? So that's how you do lead management through social. That is one way. Uh, when you do PR, you're putting, there is a so, SOV, which is share of voice. If your share of voice is very high, share of voice and recall is very, very related. It's almost uh, equally proportionate, I should say. Uh, right, so if your SOV is very high, then uh, your brand is on top of the, you know, the industry and then the recall value is very high and therefore your clients know you. The foot in the door becomes easier when you're having conversations with a client or a candidate, your brand is a lot more recognizable, right? So that is one area. Uh, the other one is thought leadership pieces, which marketing does along with research. Uh, you know, in, in our case, it could be salary trends, it could be job trends, again, making it a lot more relevant for the clients and candidates. So that's how you will get a lot more queries into the company. So again, you know, adding to the uh, bottom line of the company or a top line, whichever is applicable. And then you have uh, definitely 
uh, digital and social playing a huge role if your website is not let's say up and running it's not relevant it's not updated then you're losing people who are coming to your web page so therefore you're you know by keeping that updated by keeping that relevant you're adding to the traffic to the organization you're tra- adding traffic to the content that they're consuming so in today's world you have so many tools which can actually track uh, a heat map of the page itself you can track what your you know consumers are consuming on the page what your clients are consuming on the page so therefore you know switching content um, putting the content that is being more consumed you can move the content again that leads to a query like suppose people go and read about uh, let's say this podcast they will know that you have done this and they would want to know if you would like to do one more podcast for them i'm just you know giving you a scenario right so then it that is a query for you that's the lead for you and therefore i mean if you this was a revenue generating thing then that converts to business right so all everything you do in marketing ends up in that last box of creating leads for the company and then from there you have to continuously you know keep your audience engaged uh, keep your people engaged and therefore convert that to warm leads and then to actual revenue that's how it works that's how the pipeline works yes ma'am because it's very important because i have done a few internships where people who are in the field of marketing if they are given the ultimate job that you have to talk to this lead and convert this lead as well through your marketing you have generated this lead and now you have to convert this as well people say that it's not my job it's a job of a bd or a business development thing so this is very important for someone who's in marketing to understand that your job is not just limited to creating that awareness and impact where you have generated the leads but ultimately to convert that leads also and then the last question is any advice that you would give to anyone who's stepping into the corporate world any student uh, any youngster any last piece of advice because you have had an illustrious career any last i mean you have long way to go maybe you have but uh, any last piece of advice that you would like to give someone to me or anyone who is watching this podcast any last piece of advice any golden words that you would like to give good i think um, so vibe it is about uh, you know being in the now i think that's really important when uh, you are you are working and in today's world you need to also have that balance uh, in your life right uh, you need to this is not just about achieving in, in the corporate world and not having a healthy life outside you, it's it's really important that you are having that balance you take time out for yourself uh you know give that importance to your life as well um also you know ensure that your family is safe your you know take uh, taking care of your uh, you know their their needs as well also read keep reading take time out not don't it's not about just netflix and uh, it's not just about the digital media uh, there is so much more learning that happens by reading books uh by reading a lot beyond your subject it's not just your academic knowledge that you should be accumulating it's and meet people and as, as i said network uh, it can be virtual uh, today you have so many uh, platforms to network uh, so at, you know take your, make use of those platforms and uh, stay relevant that's all i would say and stay safe yes ma'am i have uh, means from this podcast i have been a lot of new information has come in because i knew things about marketing through my mba but getting experience from a corporate leader like you a multiple number of things that i have learned through this podcast and hopefully a lot of the people who watch this podcast will learn about these aspects which maybe they are missing in their mba studies about marketing about the corporate life and it will help them to get that connect which from their academic to their corporate when they will go in they'll get that connect and then understand even better what your words are because they'll relate to it much more when they go to the corporate so thank you ma'am for joining us in this podcast it was absolutely amazing talking to you thank you so much vibha thank you for those very beautiful questions as well thank you so much